<laughs> hey, Brother Roy here, Old School Bible Baptist Ministries. Okay, uh, so today uh, we're going to talk about the church of Laodicea. Amen. So I'm wondering how many of y'all might have seen this. Yep, there he is, the face of the Laodicean church, <laughs> Joel Osteen and company. And what's he doing right there? Well, he's at Lady Gaga's LGBTQ Pride Festival event, glorifying what she's glorifying. Wow. Let's talk a little about that, but let's pray first. Father, we just come before you today uh, recognizing, hallelujah, the, the glory of the cross, the blood of Jesus, our salvation, your precious holy Bible. And Father, we recognize that we are now in those end times that you talked about, and we see it going on all around us. Help us today to uh, just bring forth a little of your word uh, that will bless your people and glorify you in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Yes. Yes. It's a, it's a sad state of affairs for sure. But when you look in the book of revelation and, uh, you look at the letters to the seven churches, you will see that these letters each correspond with an era in the church age. So the church age being from the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ until our gathering together unto him that we call the rapture. So that is the church age. And you can go through these letters in Revelation and you'll see how they correspond to the different ages of the almost 2,000 years of the church. Now, the very last one is the church of Laodicea. And let's read what the message to them is. And unto the angel of the church of Laodicea, right? These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot, so then because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth, because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him, and he with me. The Lord says, there are some folks that just going to get spewed out of his mouth. And these are folks supposedly in the church. Now, don't get me wrong. A born-again believer in the age of grace cannot lose his salvation. But there's some folks in the church that aren't saved, that call themselves Christian, and here's what they're going to face. Look with me real quick over in the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 7. We'll start reading in verse 17. 
That's what the Lord says. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that is bringing not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. That's right. He said, I never knew you. It's not somebody who was saved and lost their salvation. It's somebody that was never saved because hmm. what they had was an artificial Laodicean watered down form of fake Christianity, which is not biblical Christianity. So you can't love something without hating its opposite. Amen? I mean, if you love the Lord Jesus Christ, you will hate sin. Now, I'm not saying that your flesh doesn't still love it. I'm not saying that you won't still struggle with it, but your true man, your spirit man, your new man inside will hate that sin. Nobody's going to stop sinning, but you will have a change of heart, a repentant heart about your sin if you're saved. But what in the world is old Joel <laughs> doing with that crowd? Well, I'll tell you. We had a saying in the penitentiary, when the new guys hit the yard and they were a little deer in the headlights, they didn't know where to go. They didn't know what to do. You know, we told them, get in where you fit in. Yeah, get in where you fit in. And old Joel, <laughs> he got in where he fit in. Huh? Listen. Jesus went to sinners. Jesus ate with sinners. Jesus was a friend of sinners. But Jesus didn't sin with them, and he didn't celebrate their sin. What sin is that, you say, Brother Roy? Well, I think Paul is quite clear about that in Romans chapter 1, and we'll just go by his words. You don't need my opinion. Amen? And he says this. So professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever and ever. Amen. Can you say, live your best life now? Huh? Verse 26. For this cause, God gave them up to vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. This is the 
end times. This is the Laodicean church age. Paul said that in the latter days, many shall depart from the faith, give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. He also said that the time is coming where they will not endure sound doctrine, but they're going to heap to themselves teachers like Joel Osteen having itching ears, heap to themselves teachers after their own lusts. They will not endure sound doctrine. They will not endure the truth. They have an artificial, worldly form of Christianity that is not biblical Christianity. There's no hell in it. There's no blood in it. There's no Holy Spirit in it. And there's no salvation in it. And the man can stand, stand there and hold a Bible in his hand and say, this is the word of God. You liar. You do not believe that book. You do not believe that book for a second. You're using that book to create what you have created, which is a multi, multi million dollar financial empire. All you have done is made merchandise of the word of God, and you have completely robbed and defrauded God's sheep. I would not want to be you, and I'm not going to say on the, judge, on the day of the judgment seat of Christ, I am not, I would not want to be you at the great white throne of judgment. Because see, hell's going to be hotter for some folks. The Bible talks about receiving a greater damnation. And you just stoke in the fires there, old Joel. Shame on you. I pray you get saved. I pray you find the Jesus of this book, the one that's holy, the one that's true, the one that's right. Amen. Well, one thing we know, when you see all these things come to pass, look up, your redemption draweth nigh. The time is short. He's soon to come. We're just a remnant, but hold fast. Hold fast, remnant, in these last and evil days. Stay true to him. Stay true to his word, because he is coming soon. God bless you, and we'll see you in the next one.